Good morning, everyone. Today's topic is case history taking and treatment planning for complete denture. And it is going to be covered in these contents. Introduction. Examination is defined as a scrutiny or investigation for the purpose of making a diagnosis or assessment. The examination should be carried out meticulously. A systemic recording of case history along with careful examination and evaluation leads to a diagnosis, probable prognosis and a tentative plan. The intraoral examination will determine if any surgical correction is necessary and the prosthodontist can realize these possibilities and discuss them with the patient. Now coming to the general information, name, it is important for establishing the patient's identity and addressing a patient by his or her name creates a rapport between the dentist and the patient and it also helps in the documentation. Next, age, it is an indicator of the patient's ability to use and wear the dentures. Younger patients usually show better healing ability and also adapt to the treatment uh, easily, whereas older patients need more care and patient on part of the dentist. And systemic diseases and medications are also more relevant in older age. Next, coming to the sex, uh, generally appearance is a higher priority for women than for male, may, men, and males may be more concerned about uh, more uh, comfort and function. Then occupation or social information, uh, a patient's job and social standing often determines the value he or she places on the oral health as well as the aesthetics and other qualities desired in a denture. And the profession uh, also plays a role like lecturers and public speakers and musicians may need greater attention to detail in the palatal shape and thickness and they also need perfect attention. And uh, uh, executives in high stress jobs and people who work in places with a high physical exertion may need more rugged teeth. And for professional professionals, uh, appearance and retention is more important. Then location and address, it is needed for communication and for future correspondence. It also helps us to know about the endemics in the area, endemic diseases in the area. And the uh, dental caries is a more common disease in urban areas, whereas periodontal disease is more common in rural areas. Next, coming to the habits. Pan smoking, alcoholism, uh, may modify the systemic status and also evoke concerns regarding the hygiene and maintenance and wear of the denture. And nail biting can cause instability and clenching and bruxism also have, uh, affect the teeth selection. In all the above cases, the patient should be educated about the adverse effects of such habits. Then the nutritional history, it can be obtained through a record of food intake of the patient over a three to five days period. This helps in evaluating the nutritional status of the patient. The ability of the oral tissues to withstand the stress of a denture is greater in a well-nourished patient. So dietary counseling may be necessary in malnourished patients. Then gait, it is the person's manner of walking. The observations regarding the patient's walk, steadiness, and the level of coordination can help in gaining an insight into the patient's motor skills and any systemic disease. Abnormal gait or walking abnormality is when a person is unable to walk in the, in the usual way. It can be due to injury or underlying conditions. Stooped shoulders may be seen uh, in cases of changes in the spine. Usually in these uh, these, these patients, you can see a protrusion of mandible, mandible uh, due to the TNJ discomfort. And a patient who drags one leg may have un, uh, had a stroke in his past. And fascinating gait is seen in Parkinson's disease. And staggering gait or ataxic gait is uh, seen in patients uh, who have had alcohol intake or they who have used excessive medication of muscle relaxants. Then complexion, it is used to select the color of the teeth. It may also be indicative of the following conditions like a pale uh, complexion is seen in anemia and the ruddy complexion in polycythemia or chronic alcoholism and the bluish purple uh, complexion is seen in vitamin deficiency or cyanosis. Then coming to the mental attitude, MM House in 1915, 50 gave uh, this classification. He classified the uh, uh, patients into four types. First is the philosophical patient. In this, the patient is rational, sensible, calm, and composed in different situations. And the, these patients are also confident, easygoing, and cooperative. These patients overcome conflicts and organize his time and habits in an orderly manner. And uh, he, they learn to adjust rapidly. Exacting patients, these patients are methodical, precise, and accurate and at times make severe, severe demands. Uh, they like each step of the procedure to be explained. And these, pa these patients have all the good attributes of a philosophical patient. However, they will require extreme care, effort, and patience on the prosthodontist part. 
then the indifferent patient these uh, patients exhibit little concern if any they are apathetic and uninterested and they lack motivation the indifferent type of patient present a questionable or unfavorable prognosis then the hysterical patient they are emotionally unstable excitable and excessively apprehensive the prognosis is unfavorable or and sometimes additional professional help like the psychiatric counseling can be may be required prior to or during the treatment next coming to the medical history a thorough and accurate medical history must be obtained during the diagnostic phase of the uh, complete denture therapy and it must be updated as necessary Uh, diabetic uh, diabetic mellitus it is one of the most prevalent and common systemic conditions in diabetic patients we can see there is periodontal breakdown or abscess formation and there is stomia which can lead to mucosal ablation and ulceration and there is also poor wound healing and there is also progression of the uh, of bone resorption over time and usually we can see an increased incidence of oral candidiasis so in management of diabetic mellitus patients the uh, mucostatic technique should be used and the wax facials should cover the complete tissue in special trays and uh, prosthetic factors such as broad area of tissue coverage and decreased buccolingual visibility and setting of the teeth, teeth above the ridge should be done and the patient is also instructed to frequently massage the oral tissues and come for frequent checkups and then the cardiovascular disorders these conditions include hypertension or angina pectoris or myocardial infarction or bypass surgery congestive heart failure usually non invasive prosthodontic treatments may not require any alteration in the treatment plan uh, and anxiety and pain control protocol should be adhered to then the diseases of the bones and joints osteoarthritis in this the terminal joints on the fingers are arthritic so it is difficult for the patient to insert and clean the dentures and when, when it affects the tmj the mouth opening will be restricted and painful movements of the jaw may necessitate the use of special impression trays and it is also difficult to get a proper jaw relation and occlusal correction must be made often because of the arthritic changes in the tmj then the pages disease it is a disorder of the bone in this there is continuous destruction of the bone and simultaneous replace, replacement by an abnormally soft and poorly mineralized material usually the maxilla is involved and it continues uh, and continues to slowly enlarge so new dentures must be made periodically and the neurological disorders and uh, these include epilepsy bell palsy parkinson's disease they can influence the denture retention your relation records and impression making procedures and the bell palsy in this there is facial asymmetry lack of muscular control of the affected side and there is failure of the eyelid to close normally on the affected side and there is excessive tearing on the paralyzed side dro drooping of the uh, corner of the mouth and emission of saliva retention is difficult to achieve in these patients and uh, sometimes cheek plumpers may be used due to the loss of uh, muscle support and uh, proper use of dentures is a problem the patient should be educated in mastication and mouth hy oral hygiene then the parkinson's disease and this arrhythmical muscular tremors which include the tongue and the muscles of mastication muscle rigidity which is usually evident and a very slow movement by the patient and uh, excessive salivation and a fixed mask like expression is seen uh, uh the patient may be uh, administered with sedatives before fabrication before fabrication of the denture and it has the tension is difficult in this patient it may be wise to remove the dentures when they are not in use and this will add to the comfort of the patient and eliminate the danger of swallowing them then epilepsy Epilepsy, epileptic patients, uh, they run the risk of frequently breaking and swallowing them during seizures. The risk can be reduced if patients and relatives are taught how to uh, remove the dentures. And due to the possibility of swallowing, a radio opening material can be incorporated into them. The appointments should be scheduled when the seizures are less likely to occur, and the light can be a trigger in inducing an epileptic seizure. therefore dark or colored glasses can be used as eye protection and the operating light must be controlled only into the mouth and not flashed into the patient's eyes and anemia eye and deficiency anemia causes uh, atrophic mucosa purpura and burning sensation 
and these patients usually have fragile mucosa so the denture should be as smooth as possible and it is important that these patients uh, first be is under good medical care good oral hygiene efficient dentures and small food table with maximum supporting area to keep the supporting tissues from being over stimulated then diseases of the skin uh, which include pemphigus lupus erythematosus they have oral manifestation which may vary from ulcers to bullae uh, and these can be painful so the lesions can be attributed to the local trauma denture irritation accidental biting or sharp uh, surfaces ill fitting dentures can induce a hypoplastic reaction and can lead to epulis and the constant use of prosthesis should be discouraged for these patients then oral malignancy and radiation therapy in this uh, the high dose radiation therapy results in hypovascularity and there is a reduction in the wound healing capacity and stress bearing capacity of the tissues the tissues have a bronze color and there is a loss of tonicity which is not suitable for uh, denture support in treatment and examination should be done for uh, uh, radio necrosis and xylobox and use of denture adhesion may be necessary and a waiting period should be lag between the end of the radiation therapy and beginning of the complete denture construction then the infectious diseases like the viral fungal or the bacterial infections should also be considered which might be harmful to the patient and the dentist the most frequent order of fungal infection in the dental virus is candidiasis the loss of vertical dimension as well as drooling of saliva creates a moist environment and the labial commissures that favor the yeast infection and then in patients suffering from tuberculosis the ill fitting dentures can now uh, start new tubercular lesions in the mouth and herpes simplex virus patients are advised to remove the prosthesis during the infected phase and the treatment also should be delayed to protect the dentures then the medication uh some of the uh, this some of the side effects of the medication which can affect the oral environment are like the xerostomia changes uh, or changes in the oral microflora and there can be mucosal changes or sil there can be sialuria dysphagia and these might affect the wear of the dentures then the denture history chief coming to the chief complaint according to dwan the dentist should meet the mind of the patient before he meets the mouth of the patient the reason for uh, to ask the chief complaint first is if this is not done chief complaint may be overlooked during therapy and the second is to assess whether the patient's expectations are realistic or uh, attainable and it also provides an insight into the house's psychological classification then the history of the present illness and this the duration of the dental illness should be questioned and the response as the responses to this question provide information about bone resorption patterns then the reason for the tooth loss whether it is uh, due to periodontal or uh, then uh, congenital or uh, caries should be questioned because the amount of bone loss would be more for a patient with periodontal disease history and the sequence of tooth loss should also be recorded patients who have been uh, Uh, in which uh, posterior teeth were extracted prior to the anterior teeth uh, they have a habit of eating with the front teeth and this may lead to an unstabilized effect on the denture and there is a loss of and if there is a loss of uh, lower posterior teeth sometimes there is an supra eruption of the upper posterior teeth and there is an overhanging maxillary tuberosity then on the denture history or the previous denture history in this this gives an insight into the patient's previous experience with the experience and the prosthetic tolerance and the aesthetic values the patient should be questioned about the duration number and the reason for the change in the denture and the old denture should be uh, examined for its aesthetics phonetics retention stability extension contour and vestibular extension and the centric relation and the vertical dimension should also be examined and the patient's ability and motivation to clean the dentures should also be assessed during clinical evaluation next coming to the extra oral examination that is the facial examination the patient's head and neck region should first be examined in general for the presence of any pathological condition relating to the non dental systemic conditions or relating to non dental or systemic conditions and nodules and ulcerations and the lymph nodes should also be uh, checked 
then the facial pro profile is examined according to angle it can be classified as class 1 which is straight and class 2 which is retrognathic and class 3 which is prognathic then the facial form this is classified uh, or given by uh, flash and fissure can be uh, identified by contact taking the points on the forehead the zygomatic arch and the angle of the mandible based on the relationship of these lines the form can be classified into uh, square tapering square tapering and ovoid it is a useful aid in selective selection the general outline of the tooth should be correspond to the general outline of the face then the lip examination uh, the lip length it is measured from the subnasal to the most inferior point of the upper lip and midline and the lower lip length is uh, measured from the most superior part of the lower lip to gnathion and it can be classified as long normal or medium and short patients with a short upper lip will expose all the upper anterior teeth and the denture base whereas a patient with long lip will hide most of the anterior teeth then the lip support can be classified as adequately supported or unsupported insufficiently supported uh, lips are characterized uh, by grouping or deepening of the nasolabial group and a reduction in the prominence of the filtrum, reduction in the visible part of the lip, and grouping of the corners of the mouth. And there is also a lack of a facial muscle tone and lack of support by the alveolar ridges. Then the lip thickness it is examined from the labial aspect of the incisor to the anterior most part of the lip with calipers. Thin lips rely on appropriate labiolingual position of the uh, teeth for fullness and support, whereas the thick lips need lesser support from the artificial teeth and labial flange. Then the lips should also be examined for any cracking or fissuring and ulcerations, which may be caused due to vitamin deficiency or uh, infection. Then the muscular examination. The musculature plays an important role in the stability of the denture. The tone of the facial tissues may indicate the limitations to improve the patient's facial contours. The muscle tone of the patient can be classified as class 1. In this, the patient exhibits normal tension, tone, and placement of the muscles of the mastication and facial expression. No degenerative changes are apparent. And usually, this is seen in immediate denture patient. In class 2, the patient displays approximately normal function but slightly impaired muscle tone. It is uh, seen in denture wearers with efficient dentures and correct uh, vertical dimension. In class 3, the patient exhibits greatly impaired muscle tone and function. It is usually uh, coupled with poor health, inefficient dentures. Um, uh, wrinkles and decreased biting force and drooping commissures. Then the temporal mandibular joint uh, and its associated musculature should be examined for pain, tenderness uh, by palpation and mandibular movement. And the range of opening, deviation, and clicking, and crepitus and coughing sounds should also be exam uh, examined. Intra next is the intraoral examination. In this, the uh, Mucosa of the cheeks, lips, floor of the mouth, residual ridge, hard palate, and soft palate is evaluated for color, thickness, and the condition. The color, the color of the mucosa may range from healthy and pink to an angry red. Redness is a sign of inflammation, which can be due to irritating dentures or infections or uh, smoking or systemic diseases. And white patches and uh, brown uh, pigmented spots should also be noted. And if the cause is uncertain for them, a biopsy should be indicated. Then the condition. Uh, the condition of the oral mucosa was classified by how as class 1 which is healthy, class 2 which is irritated, uh, which can be just redness due to ill-fitting dentures. This can be just laceration and class 3 which is pathological, uh, which can be seen as epidus fissuratum or uh, malignancies. Then coming to the thickness of the oral mucosa, according to Dr. M. M. Hall, uh, Uh, class 1 is the normal uniform density of the mucosal tissues, approximately 1 mm thing. The investing membrane is firm but not tense and it forms an ideal cushion for the basal seat of the denture. And class 2 is subdivided into 2A and 2B. 2A is where the soft tissues are a thin investing membrane and highly susceptible to uh, irritation under pressure. And 2B is the soft tissues have mucosal membrane twice the normal thickness. And class 3 is the soft tissues have an excessively thick investing membrane filled with redundant tissues. Sometimes these, uh, con this condition may require uh, surgical correction. 
then the residual alveolar ridge or the arch form it can be classified as a class 1 which is square class 2 which is tapering and class 3 which is oval in the ridge contour the maxillary ridge and the wall form should be classified as uh, class 1 which is uh, square to gently rounded and class 2 which is tapering to v shape and class 3 which is flat and the mandibular ridge form can be uh, classified as inverted uh, u shaped with parallel walls and a broad crest and the class 2 which is inverted u shaped with a uh, short walls with a flat crest and the class 3 which is which can be a thin inverted v or a short inverted v or an inverted w then atwood has classified residual ridge as order 1 which is pre extraction order 2 which is post extraction order 3 which is high well rounded and the order 4 which is knife edged order 5 which is low well rounded and order 6 which is depressed the ideal is the high ridge with flat crest and nearly parallel sides because it supports uh, gives maximum support and stability then the interridge distance it is examined by asking the patient to bring the jaws to rest and the lips are retracted to measure the distance between the two jaws at the premolar region uh, it's classified as class 1 which is the ideal interarch space to accommodate the artificial teeth is usually between 18 to 21 mm and the class 2 in which there is excessive uh, interarch space leading to poor stability and retention of the dentures because of the increased leverage action and class 3 where there is insufficient interarch space to accommodate the uh, artificial teeth then uh, ridge parallelism uh, it refers to the parallelism between the planes of the ridges when teeth are gra uh, gradually lost the residual ridges will diverge from each other and then if the ridges are not parallel to the occlusal plane the dentures tend to uh, slide over the maxillary tissues when occlusal forces are applied which parallelism can be classified as class 1 in which both ridges are parallel to the occlusion plane class 2 in which the mandibular ridge is uh, diverging anteriorly in this only one denture slides forward and the class 3 the both the ridges diverge anteriorly so both the denture slides forward then the positional relationship the positional relationship of the mandibular ridge to the maxillary ridge uh, can be classified as class 1 which is the in which the anterior segment of the mandibular ridge is directly below slightly posterior to the maxillary ridge and uh, class 2 which is the retrognathic mandible and class 3 which is the prognathic mandible then heart palate uh, can be classified uh, by bernard can be classified by bernard levin as flat rounded u shaped or v shaped and then the palatal throat form according to how it can be classified as class 1 which is uh, more than 5 mm of mobile tissue available for force damming in class 2 which has 1 to 5 mm of mobile tissue available for post damming a good retention is usually possible and class 3 which, in which there is less than 1 mm mobile tissue available for post damming then the soft palate can be classified as a class 1 which is horizontal as it makes a 10 degree angle to the heart palate and it demonstrates little muscular movement in this case more tissue coverage is possible for the posterior palatal seal and in class 2 the soft palate makes a 45 degree angle to the heart palate and class 3 soft palate makes a 70 degree angle with the heart palate then coming to the lateral throat form We classified the lateral throat form as class 1. In which the anatomical structure will accommodate a fairly long and wide flange, and class 2, in which uh, the throat, lateral throat form is half as long and wide as this class 1, and class 3, which uh, has minimum uh, thickness and length. A simple diagnostic test is to use a mouth ridge, often the same length and width of the denture flange, which can be uh, placed in the fossa. And the patient can be asked to make the uh, moderate movements. In the frenum attachment, then it was classified according to MM House as class 1, uh, which is high in maxilla or low in mandible with respect to the crest of the ridge, that is uh, 0.5 inches or, or more below the 
between the level of attachment and the crest and class 2 medium that is between 0.5 inch to the 0.25 inch and class 3 uh, the attachment height is less than 0.25 inch from the crest in class 3 the frenae may encroach on the crest of the ridge and they may interfere with the tension seal then the tongue the tongue size can be cla was classified uh, yeah, classified by mm house as class 1 which is normal in size and development and function and class 2 the teeth may have been absent long, absent long enough to permit a change in the form and function of the tongue and class 3 in which there is an excessively large tongue the so old teeth have been large for an extended period of time allowing for the abnormal development of the size of the tongue and then the position of the tongue this classification was given by right in class 1 the tongue fills the floor of the mouth and is confined by the mandibular teeth. In class 2, the tongue is retracted and the floor of the mouth is pulled downward and is exposed to the molar area. In class 3, the tongue is very tense and pulled backward and curled up. Next is the saliva. Saliva can be classified as a class 1, uh, which is the normal quality and quantity of saliva. It has non. Uh, ideal cohesive and adhesive properties class 2 in which there is excessive salivation and it contains more mucus and class 3 which is the rostomia in the bony undercut uh, can be classified as a class 1 in which there is no bony undercut and class 2 uh, there is there are small undercuts and the density can be placed by altering the path of insertion and in class 3 the pro there are prominent bilateral undercuts which must be corrected surgically usually in the maxillary eye they are found in the anterior ridge and laterally in the fibrosity region and in the mandibular eye they are usually found in the milo hyoid ridge then the uh, milo hyoid ridge should also be examined by palpation uh, uh, if it is sharp or normal the mucous membrane over a sharp or an irregular mylohyoid ridge will be easily traumatized by the denture base unless relief is provided by provided in the denture base. And the junior tubercles should also be checked for the same. And then the tori should uh, tori, if any present, should also be um, examined. And the classification for tori is the uh, class one, in which the tori are absent or minimal in size. And the existing tori do not interfere with the denture construction. And class two, where there are, uh, the clinical examination reveals tori of moderate size. Such tori offer mild difficulties in denture construction and use. And surgery is usually not required. And class three, where there are large tori, and they compromise the fabrication and function of the denture. They usually require a surgical recontouring or removal. Then we do the radiographic examination of the dentalist patient. This uh, radiographic examination will reveal the presence of any residual roots if present or an unadopted teeth or cyst or tumor and other abnormalities in the patient. And uh, uh, the risk resorption can be uh, assessed by a classification given by Wickel and Scoop. The distance between the lower edge of the dental foramen and the lower border of the mandible multiplied by 3 will give the original residual alveolar ridge height. So in class 1, when, where there is mild resorption, it is a loss up to one third of the original vertical height. In class 2, the moderate resorption, there is loss of one third to two thirds of the vertical height. And class 3, there is severe resorption in which there is loss of two thirds or more of the vertical height. Then uh, the word diagnosis, uh, diagnosis. The word diagnosis is derived from the Greek word dia, which means thorough, and gnosis, which means knowledge. And it is defined as to know apart or to distinguish. For our purposes, diagnosis is defined as the act or process of deciding the nature of a disease condition by examination and a careful investigation of the facts to determine the nature of the things or the determination of the nature, location, and causes of the disease. According to the glossary of prosthodontics, diagnosis is defined as a determination of the nature of the disease. And now the diagnostic aids include uh, pre-extraction records like the old diagnostic cards and uh, 
old radiograms and photographs. To, achieve, come up, to come to a diagnosis, the American College of Prosthodontists have developed a classification system of class, complete uh, identionism based on diagnostic findings. These guidelines help practitioners to determine appropriate treatment plan. They uh, prepare four categories and they define, uh, are defined ranging from class 1 to class 4 and these represent uh, uncomplicated clinical situations to most complex high risk conditions. And these classifications include mandibular bone height, the ridge morphology, the maxilla and the muscle attachment of the mandible, the maxillomandibular uh, relationship, and the interdarch space, and any conditions which may require pre-prosthetic surgery, and the tongue anatomy. These all factors are taken into consideration while coming to achieve a diagnosis. Then we arrive at the treatment planning. The treatment planning is the process of matching possible treatment options with patients' needs and systematically arranging the treatment in order of priority, but in keeping with a logical or a technically necessary treatment. The treatment plan addresses the patient's needs, so uh, it enables us to take an informed consent from the patient and tell the patient to how much operating time is needed and how much laboratory time is needed. So it is making the process easier for the patient and the dentist. So the treatment planning can be divided into the adjunctive care and the prosthodontic care. The adjunctive care is the elimination of the infection, the sources of infection like infected necrotic ulcers and the periodontic leaf, teeth and the non-vital teeth should be removed and the infective conditions like candidiasis, orphitic stomatitis and dentist stomatitis should be treated and cured before the commencement of the treatment and elimination of pathological conditions like cysts and tumors should also be uh, removed or treated before complete denture treatment begins. Then tissue conditioning should be done. The patient should be requested to stop wearing the previous denture for at least 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours before commencing the treatment and they should be taught to massage the oral mucosa regularly and special procedures should be done in patients who have adverse tissue reactions to the dentures. And denture relining material should be applied on the tissue side of the denture to avoid denture irritation. Then pre-prosthetic surgery. These are surgical procedures designed to facilitate fabrication of the processes or to improve the prognosis of the prosthetic care. These may be needed in cases of uh, hyperplastic uh, maxillary tuber tubercle or hyperplastic uh, tissue. And uh, Papillary hyperplasia or epilipsidatum, or in case of prominent myeloid and internal oblique ridge, or in uh, case of tori, or sometimes vestibuloplasty or ridge augmentation may also be needed. Then the nutritional patient of the counseling, if needed, is to be done. The patient should eat a variety of foods and build diet around a, a complex carbohydrates, which includes fruits, vegetables, whole grain breads, and enriched cereals. And at least five servings of fruit and vegetables uh, should be taken daily. And fish, poultry, lean meat, and eggs or dried peas and beans also. And calcium rich foods also should be uh, consumed. And uh, there should be a limited intake of the bakery uh, products, which are high in fat and simple sugars. And uh, the patient should drink several glasses of water or juice or milk daily. And then the prosthodontic care of the patient can be started. And this, the complete denture fabrication is done. First, the primary impression will be made using a compression compound. Then the primary impression uh, will be used to make a primary cast. And the custom tray will be fabricated over it. Uh, over this custom tray, the bordery, border molding and the secondary impression will be taken. Again, on the secondary cast, we make the denture bases and the occlusal rims. Track. Using these uh, occlusal rims, we take the jaw relation of the patient, jaw relation for the patient, and then after this, we set the teeth. Select the teeth and set the teeth, and then we do the try and the denture. Then after this, they, we process the denture using heat cure uh, acrylic denture base resin. Then the delivery of the upper and the lower den complete dentures is done.
in all this uh, process, patient education is also an important uh, initial and continuing activity integral to and supportive of the treatment plan. The, pur the purpose is to inform the patient of their dental health and its significance and give the patient an understanding of the significance of credentialism. And it also matches the patient's expectation with reality of the treatment potential. So it will help the patient uh, understand about the diagnostic procedure, the result, the treatment plan, the treatment to be provided, and the use of processes and the care needed. And it will help them as, uh, accept the treatment and accept the fee and the continuing care, which is the fabrication of a denture and the follow-ups. These are my references. Thank you.